I'm Jen, and uh, this is the Roving Crafters, and it's Sunday, which must make this Sunday stitch. And then this particular Sunday, we're going to spin. We're going to hand spin yarn, and specifically, we're going to talk about what it takes to spin silk, 100% silk roving. I've got an ounce of my my little silk done here. Um, this is what it comes to me as gorgeous, pretty, isn't it? Yes, it's like a beautiful mess. I thought I would make a short little Sunday stitch on how I'm getting my silk spinning done because I'm doing it under less than ideal conditions. Silk begs to be spun at a very fine weight. You need fine weight singles. And part of that is you have to manage your twist. You need a higher twist. And you have to manage the draw. Draw being that all wheels naturally have a certain amount of pull as they pull from your hands and feed onto the bobbin. I'm, I have a bobbin lead wheel, which means that my wheels have more pull than the other two standard models, which are flyer lead and double drive band. The flyer and the bobbin, and the reason why my wheel is bobbin lead is because the whirls that the drive band attaches to are on the bobbin. Together like that. As I said, I want a I want a lot of twist because I'm spinning very fine. And the size whirl that you choose to use determines helps determine how much twist you have. And I'm going to be using the middle whirl, which for me is like a medium to high twist. I'm usually on the outer one. I'm usually on the slow. I'm going to be on the medium this time. So that manages my twist, but how do I handle the draw? The more the wheel draws the yarn away from your hands and onto the bobbin, the less time you have to add that twist. So you've got to minimize your draw. You could take off all the tension, scotch tension, that's what I have, um, and you can reduce, sometimes it's called a break. But there's a certain amount of draw in every wheel. Where that draw comes from is the difference between the size of your flyer and your bobbin. We on the, these two spin independently. And then the bobbin will turn, let's see, kind of like that. Whereas the flyer will spin in the opposite direction. It will spin around like this. And the difference between the diameters of that spinning is what determines the amount of draw. So here's how you cheat. Cheat number one, you buy a special bobbin, kind of like this, which has this hard plastic casing. And you can't... Uh, it reduces the difference in diameters between your flyer and your bobbin. But there's a way to use normal bobbin and reduce the draw. First, it's quick and dirty, of course, you fill this bobbin up with waste yarn. You get it kind of half full so that it sort of acts like that. But Again, that only leaves you about half of a bobbin's worth to put on your, half of a bobbin's worth of yarn to put on your bobbin since you filled it up with waste yarn. There's a, there's a better way. There's the way that I'm going to use, and I'm going to re, I'm going to move the camera all around and set it back up again and show you how I'm using a cross grain on my leader and on my yarn to reduce the amount of draw. And it gives me a really great, fine spun yarn. I'm going to get set up and meet you there. Alright, welcome back. So now I'm going to get my uh, my wheel, my bobbin, flyer, everything set up so that I can spin the rest of my silk. Here's how I've done it. Let me tilt this up a little bit. You see I have the, the drive band here and it's attached to my middle whirl in the back. This, for me, is my break. It's my tension. It's what, as I tighten it down, it adds pull. And as you can tell, I've taken it completely off. <laughs> that is the bare minimum amount of tension I can put on this particular wheel. The other thing that I do, and this is how I manage the difference in diameters between the flyer and the bobbin, Normally, I would have my working yarn coming like this. 
sorry, my working memory leader. And I would spin in this direction, like so. If you want to reduce the draw, feed your leader to the opposite side, cross over. Like that. And this pulls the diameter so this reduces in in uh, in practical terms the difference in diameter between your bobbin and your flyer. Do you end up spinning yarn? You end up adding twist in the same direction. I'm gonna pull this back out, and then I'm gonna get started on the project. Okay, now we're ready to actually start spinning after all that. Uh, up here I have my cross threaded leader ready to go on the bobbin. Can't see it anymore, but trust me, it's shut up exactly the way I showed you. And I've got some silk roving ready to go. If you've been following this tutorial, everything I've said so far would apply to any fiber that you wanted to spin fine or you wanted to apply a lot of twist to. If you're following this because you specifically want to spin up some 100% silk, uh, now, silk is a little tricky when it comes to drafting the fiber as you spin. Because silk is so fine and so smooth, it ten tends to feel a little, um, well, it can feel like it's sticking. It's not sticky. It's not gummy in any way. But you have to really give a firm tug to get it to start to slide. say here's some that I haven't pre-drafted at all you could tell it's still got a little bit of the kinks to it and as you pull it takes quite a bit to get it started hmm. one of the things that you can do is split because it makes that a little easier and then be sure to spread your hands out. I've got my hands spread out so far you can't really see them in the frame, can you? Split your roving. And keep your hands nice and far apart. Then you can move your hands closer together once you've gotten the silk to start drafting, to start moving for you. Okay. Let's get going. Let's actually spin some silk. So with my medium twist setting, my medium uh, twist setting and as little draw on the wheel as I can manage, let's do it. I like to use a short draw whenever I'm spinning something that I want to be very fine. Let's get it started. There we go. And I either use a forward draw or a backward draw. You know, it ends up kind of the same thing. But a short, short draw works best. Think of it like an inchworm. Inch, 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 inch. There we go. I'm going to tell you that spinning silk, spinning a fine single, is easy. It is easy once you've done all the right prep work. It's when you're fighting your wheel that is hard. Okay. That's all there is to it. I hope that was helpful. I hope it wasn't too long. And I hope you'll come back next Sunday for the next tutorial. Till then. <laughs>